a cave bathed in shadows, bones resting untouched for thousands of years, and in the center of it all, a child's esque shock throw how it what it might be. The bones didn't quite match our expectations, too modern to be fully Neanderthal, too primitive to be fully human. For years, researchers were torn. Was this simply an anomaly, a burial fluke? Or was it evidence of something far more controversial? A hybrid child, born of two worlds that were never supposed to mix. The question haunted anthropology for decades. Then, in defiance of silence and scientific taboo, a bold team of geneticists took the risk. They extracted ancient DNA from the remains. Forbidden. Fragile. Faint. But what they uncovered shattered everything we thought we knew. Could this child be the key to understanding the true relationship between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals? Or even more, could it rewrite the entire story of human evolution? The year was 1998. Deep within the Lepedo Valley, just north of Lisbon, Portuguese archaeologists stumbled upon what would become one of the most controversial discoveries in paleoanthropology. In a limestone shelter known as Lagar Velho, they unearthed the skeleton of a four-year-old child, buried with red ochre and a pierced shell, signs of ritual and care. But as they brushed away the dust of millennia, unease began to grow. The child's skull was rounded like a modern human, yet the lower limbs, stocky and curved, echoed traits of the Neanderthal. A paradox in bone and silence. This was not just another prehistoric burial. This was proof, perhaps, of something forbidden. A bridge between two species once thought genetically incompatible. The implications were enormous. If true, this child wasn't just a curiosity. It was a missing link, standing at the crossroads of two human worlds. And that changed everything. But the timing was strange. Most Neanderthals had vanished from Europe by 30,000 years ago. This child was buried around 2,4500 years ago. Was it possible that Neanderthal DNA had survived longer than anyone dared imagine? The scientific community split in two. Some called it fiction. Others saw the glimmer of a hidden truth waiting to be proven. The bones were fragile, so delicate that any wrong movement could destroy millennia of history. But amidst the care and caution, one detail stood out. Inside the sediment that surrounded the child's skeleton, archaeologists discovered tiny remnants of collagen, preserved against all odds. Collagen meant possibility, and possibility meant DNA. It was the first hint that this wasn't just a theoretical anomaly. It was a biological time capsule waiting to speak. The child's burial position was intentional, laid on his back, feet crossed, surrounded by ochre. A ceremonial send-off, rare for the era. But the physical traits were even more startling. The proportions of the femur and tibia, short, thick, and curved, mirrored the robust frame of Neanderthals. Yet the cranial volume and jaw structure aligned with anatomically modern humans. It was as if two species had collided within one body. Initial studies tried to explain it away. Could the child have simply inherited traits from isolated populations of modern humans? Or was this skeleton the silent proof of something the textbooks refused to allow? The evidence was mounting, but it would take more than bone structure to break the paradigm. Something deeper had to be found. Something written in the genetic code itself. Years passed. The skeleton, now known as the Lepedo child, became a subject of fierce academic debate. But while the arguments raged in conference halls and journal pages, a small team of researchers quietly prepared for something more definitive. Genetic analysis, a risky endeavor. Ancient DNA is notoriously fragile. Easily contaminated, often degraded, 
and sometimes entirely absent. But advances in sequencing had reached a tipping point. What was once science fiction was now within reach. Enter Dr. João Zilão and a team of international paleoanthropologists and geneticists. Their goal? To extract authentic, uncontaminated DNA from the Lapedo bones. The team worked in sterile labs under strict protocols, using ultrafine drills and chemical baths to isolate what little genetic material remained. The work was painstaking. Each fragment of DNA had to be amplified, verified, and re-verified to rule out contamination. Meanwhile, other researchers combed through surrounding archaeological sites, seeking corroborating evidence, tools, pigments, animal bones, any sign of hybrid behavior. They began to see patterns. Cultural artifacts, once attributed solely to Homo sapiens, now bore stylistic hints of Neanderthal influence. Had the two species not only interbred, but shared knowledge, rituals, and language? The pressure was mounting. If DNA could confirm what the bones only hinted at, the history of human ancestry would never be the same. Finally, after years of preparation and meticulous lab work, the results were in. Under the glow of sequencing machines, the ancient DNA fragments began to align, revealing a truth hidden for over 24,000 years. The child carried significant portions of Neanderthal DNA, more than could be explained by distant ancestry. This was not a modern human with a trace of Neanderthal lineage. This was something far closer. The genetic evidence pointed to a direct hybrid, the child of one Homo sapiens parent and one full-blooded Neanderthal. The revelation was seismic. For decades, the prevailing theory was that Neanderthals had gone extinct long before such unions could occur. But this child proved otherwise. Not only had Neanderthals survived longer than assumed, they had interacted and reproduced with modern humans in ways far more intimate than science had dared to admit. Further sequencing confirmed that the DNA fragments were genuine, not modern contamination. Ancient proteins from the child's bones matched known Neanderthal markers, especially in areas controlling skeletal development and immune response. These weren't random similarities, they were biological fingerprints. The forbidden question was now undeniable. What if Neanderthals didn't disappear, but merged into us? Picture it. The Iberian Peninsula, 2,4500 years ago. A land of cold winds, vast plains, and shadowed forests. Here, in a forgotten valley carved by ice and time, two worlds collided. Bands of modern humans, newly arrived from the east, traversed ancient hunting grounds. But they were not alone. In hidden shelters, Neanderthal groups, the last of their kind, still clung to survival. Scarred by climate shifts, outnumbered, but not yet gone. And then, the unimaginable happened. A meeting. Not in war, but in curiosity. In necessity. And maybe even love. Two beings from separate evolutionary paths shared firelight, food, and eventually, bloodlines. The result was a child, the Lepedo child, a being born of two stories. His people gave him a burial rich in ochre and ritual, a farewell marked by symbolism and mystery. But they also left behind a genetic message, etched into every cell. This wasn't an isolated event. Across Europe and Asia, traces of similar unions were beginning to surface. The blending of cultures, tools, and even languages. It was no longer a tale of extinction, but of integration. The Neanderthals didn't vanish. They became a part of us. Their genes still echo in our skin, our bones, even our immune systems. The Lepedo child was the bridge, a living testimony of a world far more complex than we imagined. The story of the Lepedo child forces us to reconsider everything we thought we knew about our origins. This wasn't just an archaeological find. It was a genetic confession.
whispered across time. Neanderthals were not primitive brutes fading into the shadows of extinction. They were artists, toolmakers, caregivers, and in the end, partners in our story. Their DNA still flows in the veins of billions alive today, traces of strength, endurance, and adaptation written in our very cells. The forbidden truth was never that humans and Neanderthals interbred. The real taboo was acknowledging that we are not so different, that the lines dividing species are blurrier than we were taught, and perhaps that what we once labeled other was, in the end, ourselves. So next time you look into the mirror, ask yourself, how much of that ancient child still lives in you? If this story captivated your curiosity, don't forget to like this video, subscribe for more scientific mysteries, and hit the bell icon so you never miss a journey into the past. Because here, we don't just tell stories, we resurrect them.